let's get into the official YouTube intro, and then we will start throwing some questions at our boy. So, all right. Uh, all right. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well, and it is time for an official exclusive interview with the one, the only, Mr. Bobby Logic. Ah! What's with with the yellow flannel on? Yes. Um, how are you doing, man? You know, I'm on 10 right now. <clears throat> on 10. If I may say so myself. You can say uh, it. No, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm great. Um, I've been looking forward to this interview, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm stoked. And after this, me and the homies are going to play COD and just chill. That's good. That's good. Sounds yeah. like a good day. Sounds like a tight schedule. Sounds like a good, For tight sure. schedule. Totally. Um, How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I was excited to do this interview all day. Um, super psyched. Been planning for it. Been getting ready. Been writing down questions on my little notepad like a good I actually boy. Actually, have a I have a question of my own. Do you still? I, I know I heard that when you were a child, you were into like cartooning. Yeah, like draw, drawing. drawing drawing little cartoons. Yeah. That's like fire. Like so. So I have a question first. Yeah. Sorry, I don't do want to be an asshole. Do it. Um, <clears throat> do you still draw first? Oh, I was a no. And I was terrible at drawing when I was a kid. And I knew I was really bad at drawing. Like, I was very bad at drawing. Um, I just mostly, it, like, I only cared to draw as a vehicle for coming up with, like, crazy, stupid jokes or just, like, asinine types of, you know, humor, um, you know, that I would express in sort of, like, a, a Simpsons type of way or, like, a South totally. Park kind of way or something like that or a Ren and Stimpy sort of way. Like, it wasn't so much, like, the joy of drawing but the joy of just, like, coming up with a gross, weird, funny idea. Um, so, you know, and, and I read a lot of Mad Magazine, too, as a kid, you know. So anything that was, like, irreverent or crude, like, I just wanted to kind of draw that. That was sort of, like, my outlet for you know, just like ship, you know, it was like real life shit posting, except I could only see it, you know, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because that's, I, I, um, I used to skateboard for a long time, probably till I was like 15 mm. and I could like kick flip down. My, my best thing was probably, I kick flip down a seven set, um, a board slided a handrail once and I switched front side flipped off a dope loading dock. And that was like basically it. And then my friend, <clears throat> he was like, dude, you're never going to make it. <laughs> And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're a pussy. You're too scared to commit. And he rapped and he, and I rapped, but I was like, ah, I don't care about this. Like I wanted to just strum a guitar and just like learn that shit. And he was like, nah, man, because I guess he saw my potential by telling me I sucked at skateboarding and just destroyed my dream. Mm. But low key, he was right because I didn't want to like break, you know, my femur off or something like that. And because of him, we're here today. So I feel that I understand that. Yeah. No, that's, okay. uh, that's, uh, the, I mean, it's going to happen at some point. And, you know, honestly, yeah. like, I feel like breaking a bone isn't an experience everyone needs to have. You know, if you can avoid it, like, why I've not? I've never broken a bone. I, I, like, sprained the shit out of my ankle once doing a kickflip off the front of the rental office hmm. in West Deer Park, but I never broke a bone. Breaking a bone. Who the fuck needs it? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Well, look, as I throw questions at you, feel free to ask me questions as well, because I'm sure people will be curious as to what you're curious about. Do you cut your own hair? Yes. Fuck yes. Why, why would do I pay like, anyone else to? Do you use a mirror to check the back and stuff? Or does um, your wife help you? Or? With, with the back, it's mostly by feel. But yeah, I, you know, I have a little mirror. It's just okay, cool. mirror, mirror in this hand. Got it. Cutters in the other hand. All right. And just do it that way. You got it. All right, let's get started. I'm just fucking right. around. Hey, look, look, all questions are good questions. Um, so first one, really obvious one, simple one, stupid one that you probably had already. But how's retirement going? It's going great. Uh, I love it. It's the shit. It's the best. I love being a dad. Um, little Bobby is just amazing. His mother is so strong. She's a great woman. She's an incredible mother. Um, and like, yeah, it's awesome. In in the meantime. Um, you know, I've been working on more novels and my autobiography and uh, other shit. So it's like for me, retiring is like <clears throat> working on other shit. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? But it's it's great. And first and foremost is family. And that's been really special. Thank you for asking. Yeah. And, and how's the, you know, specifically, how has the transition into fatherhood been? Because, I mean, 
even if you're started off with the greatest example of parenthood in the world, you still kind of get thrown into it, not knowing what to do. You know, you're really kind of just like flying by the seat yeah. of your pants and, uh, learning from square one because you know, there's, there's no, there's no fucking baby school. And, uh, on top of it, like all babies are different and you know, the, the sort of child birthing and raising experience is uh, case by case. Um, you know, what, what is, uh, uh, what has the process been like sort of learning something that's so, heavy from the start. I mean, you, you know, you're somebody who in your career has kind of like mastered their craft in a way. And, and now you're sort of thrown into this thing where you really kind of got to do it from square one and just kind of learn as you're going along. That's a really good word you use transition. Mm. I would say it's uh it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's something that I always, it's something I always wanted and, and you can really hear it, uh, in my music. Like I've always like referenced my future, like son or daughter or children or family um it's something that i've always wanted because i never really had it um it's funny i wrote a song last night <clears throat> with a buddy of mine who's just playing his guitar and i wrote this song because i still i still work on music which i'm sure we'll get into later but for my own just to make me happy because i have to because it's like been a form of therapy outside of my actual therapist but um it's a real it's just been this I don't even know how to explain it. It's like weird, man, because it's something that I've always wanted. And then when you get it, you realize it's not necessarily what you thought it was going to be. It's like way better than that. But then the reason I wanted a family probably really deep down is just to like have something that I never had, which I don't think is bad um, because I'm blessed enough to be in the position to give my son and my wife those things. But then you realize like that's no reason to actually have a family out of spite. So then you have the family and you're like, oh, fuck all the reasons that I thought. Can I cuss? Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. So I'm like, fuck all the reasons that I thought I wanted a family because of all the things that I didn't have growing up. It's not about that at all. It's really truly to enhance your life. That's how I feel also not to like go off in the deep end about like smoking dope or you know, drinking alcohol. Like a lot of people will get lost in that or use that as an escape. I use those things to enhance, you know what I mean? And I feel like my life, uh, excuse me, my family has enhanced my life more than any substance ever could. And it's really incredible. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, to, to your point there, I wouldn't feel too bad about whatever your motivations may have been going into parenthood, fatherhood, because the, the thing is like, once you're on the other end of, you know, of, of that sort of family fence, like, you know, you, you, you don't know what it is until you're there. You know what I mean? So you don't yeah, know what it sure. is exactly that you're wanting, you know, you don't, you don't understand what it is to want it before you have it truly, you know, it's like fucking life in a nutshell, bro. That's how it was sure. with rap, with music. Like I thought I wanted all this shit and then you get it and you're like, I mean, this is tight, but then you realize like what's actually m most important, at least to the certain individual, right? Whatever they desire in life. Sure. And, and speaking, you know, about your own, um, you know, past with, uh, w with family and childhood and, you know, talking about, uh, wanting something because you didn't have it necessarily like in, in what other ways would you say like your upbringing has sort of informed in your own mind now that you're on the other side of the fence, like what kind of parent, what kind of father you want to be either now in this moment or in the future as you, you know, uh, uh, see Bobby getting older or decide to have more kids. Um, great question, dude. Man, you're kind of dope at interviewing, bro. I've seen like a few of your interviews, but shit, I've seen all your, uh, a lot of your reviews, but man, I mean, well, knowing that I knew you were going to just kill it, but we asked the hard hitting questions over here. <laughs> They're great. Um, uh, I just always just wanted to be a good dad. Like at the end of the day, I just want to be a good, good person. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, and I've always wanted to make good music. And at the end of the day, all this shit is subjective, you know, depending on how you want to raise your kids or not, or this or that, or how you lead your life. Me personally, um, I really want to be a dad that can communicate with his children and, and be open about everything from sex to politics, to race, to racism, to all this, and just be so open about it. Um, because that's a lot of stuff that's been like taboo, but I feel that as, as the generations evolve, it's like kind of less and less taboo. And I feel like the majority of people seem uh, tend to be more open in general, um, especially with these things like birth control and all this stuff. Like back in the day, it was like, no, nah, there's no, no, nah, that's it. You know, I remember find, uh, my mom found condoms in my backpack when I was like 14 
And she was like, <laughs> I think I talk about this in the book I'm writing. And she was like, uh, you know, what the hell is this? I found these condoms in your backpack. And we were like walking home from the store of all times to tell me this. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, what is this? And I was like, well, I'm not having sex. I'm still a virgin. But like, just in case, you know what I mean? She's like, there is no just in case. The only birth control is Jesus Christ in your heart. And I'm just like, dude, like, I'm just like, are you fucking serious? You just, you are married, your husband's in jail and you just fucked some dude from AA last week. And you're telling me to abstain, abstain from sex. It was hilarious. And I learned a lot from that moment. And the biggest thing is like, dude, like nothing more or less, you know, unless you're like little Bobby's like, you know, killing rabbits in the backyard or something with his bare hands. <laughs> it's like, yo, chill. But for the most part, um, yeah, I want to be able to communicate. I want to be there for him. I make jokes all the time that I'm, every time I leave the house, I'm like, all right, I'm going out for a pack of cigarettes. I'll oh, be Jesus right back. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want the things that happened to me as a child um, to happen to him regarding family at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to do the best that I can to be there for him and communicate. So long story short, communication is the biggest thing that I would like to have with my child. Me and my wife have great communication, uh, which is awesome. But I, I just kind of want to build this this family together. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hoping that we're because we're we're both fucking millennials at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping we're kind of the last generation who's parented by uh a group of people who are essentially like living by this rule of, and, and it made sense when you were a kid because it was the only thing that you were ever told, but you know, the whole like do as I say and not as I do, or, you know, Bullshit. the things that hate yeah, that. it's, you know, you, you don't realize <laughs> until, or they don't realize that until like your teenagers, it doesn't work. It's not a, it's not a functional yeah. strategy. It does, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't lead to good results. It's so, actually uh, that uh, for some reason just brings a memory to my head when I was a mm -hmm. kid, I was like 13 and I'd been smoking cigarettes for a mm. while and my sisters, they were older than me and they smoked and my mom smoked and everybody smoked cigarettes. And I remember kind of being like, all right, I'm just going to smoke from now on. Fuck it. Right. And I go, Hey mom, I got to tell you something. And she's in the kitchen cooking. It's just me and her at this point. Cause I've had my, my siblings like live with me and not live with me and men be there and husbands and all this other stuff. But there was a lot of time where it was just me and my mom. And she was like, what is it? And I was like, uh, you're not going to like it. And she was like, did you break something? And I was like, no, she was like, did you get someone pregnant? And I was like, no. And she was like, oh my God, you're smoking. And I thought it was so funny. <laughs> That like the thing that's it's bad, but like you're naming all this other shit like I don't know impregnating a, a you know young girl is not as bad as like smoking cigarettes because she herself smoked cigarettes and I know that it like she hated that but then mind you like a week later I'm 13 passing cigarettes back and forth with my mom dude <laughs> like who the fuck does that dog it's crazy it's insane anyway sorry fun fact mm -hmm. nobody's heard before okay. Um, <laughs> to get into the, a little, a little, uh, uh, deeper into the retirement thing, but more around yeah. like, you know, art and creativity, like what, what, what does this mean in the strictest terms for you? Are you done with in, in the commercial sense, in the sense I'm releasing this, like, are you done with music? Are you done with rap? Are you done with just logic like or are is it like all of the above like right now in this moment um no it definitely isn't all of the above at the end of the day i love music i still make music i've kind of talked about in a few interviews like this free mixtape that i i was like oh yeah i'm making this mixtape and i'm rapping on lupe beats and kendrick beats and drake beats and i'm re you know throwing boom bap beats over break beats and redoing stuff and just like having fun um get in on that there, piff dj drama <laughs> Straight up. Get them on every, it, every track. <laughs> um, type of shit, though. Like, it's super, like, that's the era I came up on, right? And so when I did that, I was so inspired because when you're rapping on these people's beats, it has to be as good or better than, you know what I mean? If you're going to touch these, like, legendary, very well-known beats. Um, excuse me. And so for me, I've definitely... I did that. I mean, I haven't, I haven't done that in, like, three months. I did it in a weekend, and I did, like, 14 records. Hmm. 
excuse me. And it was super fun and like really therapeutic. And I was just rapping to rap um, and not to get too deep into this and still continue to answer your question, but I've kind of become this like voice for a lot of people, which I understand. And at the end of the day, I was just trying to be a voice for myself, whether it was through anxiety or my race or my this or that or whatever I was going through, I was just selfishly kind of like penning that out. And a lot of people tended to uh, relate to it. And I think a lot of people that didn't necessarily have a voice in mainstream media or music. And so they gravitated to me, uh, which really meant a lot to me. But this is none of that. This is literally like bars on bars, just like rap shit, uh, which which is so fun. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with that. But at the same time, I've also been working on music and concepts of albums and ideas of things and all this other stuff. But none of it, as you said, is as logic. I think I kind of personally hit everything I could I could want to hit. I've had my ups and downs. I've had commercial success. Uh, I've made millions of dollars. I've sold millions of records. I've gone on tour. I've sold out arenas. I've done all these things. And then at the end of the day, I was like, um, I mean, respectfully, not to be weird or anything, but we actually did have a, a personal conversation. And one of the things you had said to me was, uh, yeah, it's like playing the same fucking level over and over. Once you get to that level, so you're just playing the same level over and over and over again. And that's really how I felt. I was like, okay, number one album, number one album, number one album, Marina, this, this, over and over. And then there's this feeling of like, I have to maintain this and I, and I have to have relevance and how many likes does Travis Scott have and how many do I have and how many of this and all this bullshit. And I was like, yo, this is not fucking fun anymore. Like I did this from a place of enjoying myself from the heart and then afterwards you would market it. But then when you market it and you actually get a hit like 1-800, then you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this shit again. And don't get me wrong, I really did it from a place of having uh, fun, not 1-800, that was very serious and meant a lot to me. But I mean, one, uh, every day, which came after it from the Bobby Tarantino. And then I'm like, all right, let's do it again. And we got Homicide and let's do, we got Keanu Reeves and we got all this shit and that's hitting and that's great. And I enjoyed making it, but then it's just all about like dollar signs and money and all this shit. So with that being said, as far as logic goes, dude, I have no fucking desire anymore. Like I really don't to make another rap album. I mean, I've been talking to Mad Lib and that's the one dude that I was like, the only guy I'd make an album with is Mad Lib. And if we were going to do it, we'd, we'd, we'd coin magic. M-A-D-G-I-C. And we just, and it wouldn't be a logic album. It'd be magic. It'd be some collaborative rap shit, but I'm so off rap that that's like the last thing that I would ever want to do. So I've been in a more like faceless kind of idea that maybe in five years or who knows, or I don't know. I don't know. And that's one thing I've learned as a man is like, you know, one, one, I could feel one day, uh, one way, one day, and then completely different the next. So with that being said, I completely wholeheartedly feel that when it comes to logic, I don't want to do shit except maybe a fun Andre 3000 guest feature for some big or very underground artist that I just so happen to really love and may want to be on their shit. But besides that, when it comes to albums and full length projects, kind of just making them for myself selfishly to put in the vault. And then if I ever come up with this idea of something totally different that has nothing to do essentially with logic, then I'll do it. Hmm. Thank you for the incredibly thorough explanation. Sorry. <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, even before this point, um, it, it, it almost felt as if you were trying to sort of break out of the creative mold that had sort of been set for you by the industry or by expectations of, of your fans. I mean, to go back to the Project Supermarket, which, you know, everybody has varying opinions on. But, you know, that record is obviously you breaking genre expectations, breaking into writing. And around that time as well, there was conversation about you uh, sort of producing or coming up with a film or a movie. I know you're a bit of a movie buff, uh, which yeah. everyone can see, obviously. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, oh, shit. <clears throat> where'd all these come from? I know. Um, you know, so do, do, I, I know you're still making and recording music, but as, as of right now, as far as like your interests and creative energies, because I mean, you're still an artist at the end of the day and you're at an age and at a point in your life where you should still be like firing on all cylinders and doing your best stuff and doing your most groundbreaking stuff. Like, do you find yourself gravitating back to those other mediums or sort of heading in those directions uh, more, whether it be visual stuff or literary stuff? Definitely. Uh, I'm working on, um, so I did the, I did the first book 
supermarket, which was fiction. Mm. And that was a lot of fun. I'm going to be honest, man. It was really cool. I had no fucking idea what I was doing. And, and I just wanted to write a book and fuck it. And, and I, I say this a lot, but Alan Watts said, anything you can be interested in, you'll find others who are. And regardless if it's popular or not, or this or that, or whatever the case may be, um, I just wanted to write some, some fun shit. And to be quite honest, that entire book is basically about me, all my influences, things I love. And then it really helped me through my depression because I was going through some fucked up, serious depression and anxiety where, uh, you know, there's a part in the book where I say where the, the main character, Flynn, used to skateboard as a kid. And, you know, where people would see uh, five steps, you would see a set of five, right? As a skateboard, as you call it, it's a five set. And all these different things or, you know, a rail or this or that. And as Flynn, myself, got older, I started looking at shit different. Like that fire hydrant is something I could literally like trip on and fucking break my face and die. And for whatever reason, I was in this very negative, dark place where everything around me was just like one giant death trap. I was scared to fly in the middle of touring and all this other shit. And that book, it, it just helped me through it. I wrote so that I could cope with my depression and anxiety and talk about it and write about it and it wasn't even like to help other people or other shit like that it was like i'm just gonna fucking write a story that i like and it's all essentially based on my life but completely fictional at the same time and this character and i won't get into it for anybody who hasn't read it but it's just like this this other character in the book is like the negative side of me all my fucking intrusive thoughts and and it was kind of like my my journey of, of, of getting rid of that. So that, that was my book. And I really enjoyed that. Now, um, I'm, I've been working Well, I actually haven't, I haven't written it, uh, touched a page of it in like two years, but I'm working on a sci-fi kind of like thriller fun, um, book and a mentor of mine is Ernest Klein who wrote ready player one and also wrote the script, uh, that's uh, Spielberg ended up doing <laughs> the legs, but, <laughs> And he's, he's a really nice guy and he, he's really helped me with my writing and, and kind of opening my mind. And I love sci-fi. So I've been writing that. <clears throat> I have another, uh, another book called, uh, the Envisage of Smith Corona, which is like some bank robbery heist, super fun shit. I've been working on film. I've been doing all this other stuff. And no matter how much other shit I do, I've been getting into acting. I, I did this, um, I did the, honestly very proud of myself. My therapist, and I've said this, always tells me I need to be nicer to myself. I'm very hard on myself. I fucking snapped in this new uh, TV show called Mr. Corman, uh, starring Joseph Gordon Levitt, who's like low key one of my fucking man crushes since like 500 Days of Summer. And I love him as an actor. And somehow the universe brought us together. And before I know it, I was fucking auditioning for him, who's a writer, director, and starring in the show. And I got this fucking crazy role and i know i got it because i'm logic and that put me in the op the position to be able to audition to do this but it is acting chop shit dog it is like real it's fucking i'm not i don't play like a guy who's like hey what's up <laughs> i'm biracial like that's not my only line you know what i mean like i'm yeah. in the, the whole fucking episode i'm in is about this guy and it's really incredible and it meant so much to me and i fucking killed it and respectfully and i'm so happy that i did and so I, I got that role and I'm really excited in, 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 in uh, acting as well. But no matter what, no matter how much acting I do or writing or voiceover or books or all this fucking bullshit that I love and I just want to experience and do because it's different, I love music, man. It's <laughs> a <laughs> long story I mean, short. Sorry, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it sounds like the newest stuff is the most fun. If, if you know, just, just throwing out something totally ridiculous here, if... If you were to get into the acting thing a little bit more, like, could you see yourself like replacing Ice T on Law and Order SVU, like in the next five <laughs> to ten years? Like, is that something yeah. you'd be interested in? Like, yeah, that'd be me for sure, a hundred percent. Or maybe like a. You ever see when Justin Bieber got shot up? What was that? CIS. <laughs> when he's like, uh, yeah, that, I, I would love that. <laughs> I'd love to do that. I think that could be really cool for sure. No, totally. you, you don't want to just get shot up. You you got to be the regular. You got to be. Send I'm this scumbag not, right, downtown. Respect to, first of all, respect to Ice-T. Oh, absolutely respect. He's he's one of the goats. He's killing it, but a lot of white women in America are watching that show. Like, I'm trying to do some totally different shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait, I'm wait, wait. Well, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. The wine mom demographic is one of the realest fucking demographics <laughs> 
in in all of media consumption, like Law and Order, Ninety Day Fiance, like their shows are all fire. Like they, yeah, you know, they, so. they they have impeccable taste. You know, it's funny that you bring that up because when you say that, it also makes me think about The Bachelor, which I watch. Hmm. And the reason I watch The Bachelor <laughs> is to uh, Anthony Fontano that shit. Yeah. Okay. Like, I literally watch that and I'm like, oh, this bitch is ugly. And this fucking dude, what the fuck is up with this guy? He thinks he's got abs, meaning I'm sitting here with a fucking dad bod. And then that's the joke. Like, that's why it's funny. Now, me personally, I would never actually say that because deep down, I don't really feel that way. I don't feel the urge to, you know, shit on, hey, my name's Sarah and I'm from Alabama and I'm, I want to be a dentist. And she's got her tits all out and all this other shit. Um, it's just funny. It's entertainment. And I say this to say that I realize, and not just me, but fucking Drake and Travis, everyone is the bachelor for rap. Like hip hop and all this has turned into this just like online instant reality show, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, or this, all this other shit, where we're not really people to people. And so they, you know, they, they talk shit and they go, oh, this is whack. And he, he says this too much and she does that too much and shows her tits and blah, blah, blah. And whatever the case may be via music. And honestly, this last year that I've been working on this album, No Pressure, I've been watching a lot of Bachelor. And I've been realizing these people don't really give a shit about me as a person. They're just more so critiquing because it's a thing to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, and potentially. Way, yeah. In a way, I kind of, I don't know, at least it helped me realize that, like, I'm just a fucking entertainer and people are going to say whatever they want because I had the balls to put myself out on that stage. And I also have to be able to take any uh, criticism, hate and love uh, with a grain of salt. So, but at the end of the day, the love and the hate is it, it's only so personal because nobody knows you. You know, so yeah. it's like even if somebody is like literally in your fucking mentions every day, I fucking hate you. I wish you were dead. You're fucking biracial, blah, 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 blah. It's like they <laughs> they still don't know. They still don't know you. You know, it's like they're only upset yeah. or angry at the vision of you, you know, and, and I had to learn that shit. And I've only learned it recently because I'm an artist that really puts his heart on his sleeve and talks about yeah, yeah. you you about you put yourself in your music i think more than some people do so it it could it could lead you to the conclusion that like well i'm really putting myself in my shit so i mean in a way like they do know me and understand me maybe in a way than the better be, than they might better understand another artist who's just rapping about not their real life or not their real feelings or so, they at least have the option to know me more because I'm not like, you know, little scab or gutta or what I don't know, like some jo I'm joking, but like I'm not some persona. Like this is actually uh uh who I am, which is really crazy. So so to take it back to the uh Take it back, take it way back, take it way No, I'm sorry. Way back. Uh to <laughs> the comment and the perception about um, you know, hip hop sort of becoming a reality show. I feel like the one artist right now who understands that and is like embracing that to the 10th power like to or re really like the to the point where it's it's almost like potentially destructive for him is is like six nine you know mm -hmm. um not not that i was planning on talking about him during this interview but what you you know sort of had said reminded me of that like do you feel like a guy like him is sort of like a really weird anomaly like a once in a lifetime kind of thing or do you feel like what he's doing this sort of like weird process of uh, trolling and meme content and just sort of like attention uh, seeking like do you, do you feel like that's the future of not even just hip-hop but just kind of like popular music in general like is music going to devolve into a, just a bunch of people like essentially turning devolve. their lives into <laughs> devolve de fucking um, de fucking volve into uh, like like a jackass series where they're just like endangering <laughs> their lives or, like or, do, or doing like, stupid the shit. commercial is rap yeah <laughs> and anything else is that exactly um, uh well first and foremost i'll say takashi 69 is once in my lifetime i've i've never experienced uh an artist like that hmm. um i don't fucking know the guy but he's hmm. definitely knows what he's doing i mean you know and it's kind of it's just i mean is it him is it other people i don't know the, the fact that it's like low-key genius as fuck he came out as this gangster blood but he wasn't really that and then i'm sure there was something about like I don't know him and 
women and this and all this other shit. And then that was not a thing. And then there's other shit over here and whatever the case may be. And then he comes out of jail and he does the, what the fuck is the, what the, what's the video he did out of jail? The, the, well, he came out of jail with the, the rat the CGI face. Yeah. And that's all, what I was going to say. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, you're doing the rat face hmm. and everyone's got you a rat. But it's like, how can you not laugh at that in a way, right? It could because it's like, okay, you know, hip hop is 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 grounded on this like fucking like street law. Like, you know what I mean? You don't rat on your homies, like you ride or die for your click and you're this and all this other shit. But he came out and was like, Yeah, this was all bullshit. I was just this dude living in New York and blah, 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 and all this other stuff, which is kind of crazy. But I mean, it also further like proves the point of there's a lot of people out here living the, these these lives. That's why I always loved. I'm just gonna be fucking real. I love being myself, no matter how corny. Because I've seen motherfuckers be like, "Oh, logic's corny." Well, it's like, all right. Well, at least I'm myself. Like that's a real thing. Like I'm me. Like you could say I'm corny. I don't fit in. I'm not hip hop Twitter or the, whatever the fuck. But it's like, bro. Like I'm me though. I'm not coming out here like, "Hey, yo, what's up? I'm from B more. Uh, I'm fucking your bitch and I'm killing a dude." Like I'm not that guy. Um, so for me, I can look in the mirror and be like, "Hey, at least I'm happy and I know that I'm not trying to portray something that I'm not. That I'm not." Um, which six nine is doing the complete opposite, which a lot of motherfuckers do the complete opposite, and that's why I I, I will say uh, I love somebody like Two Chains, right? Who, who came up and did a lot of the shit that he's talking about, but also went to school. He also wised up, and if you listen to his, uh, I believe it's his most recent album. Uh, you know, he talks about like growing up from that and making it out of that, and then understanding that selling drugs to his own community wasn't like the thing to do, but it was it was uh, uh, it, it was shown and like almost marketed within this this culture as like, oh yeah, that's dope. You sell crack and you do all this other shit. And he was like, no, nah, that's not the way to be. Now you could say he's woke and probably pushing forty, almost forty, forty some, maybe almost. And, and really realizing as a man, like, yo, this is bullshit and I don't want to be remembered for this. But that's at the same time why I don't necessarily knock real hood dudes who live that life, rap about those things um, at a young age because it's all they know. Especially when you have these people who are like a chief key for uh, whoever uh, at, at, in his time, uh, you know, who's in the south side of Chicago or any hood that they're in. That's literally all they know. So that's what they're rapping about. And then they get famous and then they kind of leave the hood and then they realize like, oh shit, this, is, this isn't what the real world is actually like. This is what my world is like and my world is real. But all this perpetuation of drugs and violence and all this shit isn't necessarily the way out or how to make it. And then they go on to kind of tell that story and actually change as people for the better and, and set an example. So with 6 9 respectfully, and you probably know this. I don't really talk about a lot of other artists, but I will hear <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, but, I will, but I will hear... Um, that, that, sorry, that just got me excited. No, no, it's not, I, I just had an itch on my face. That's all. Um, no, your mic was like, well, no, I, uh, I know when I, when I talk about, <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. It's a very sexy mirror. I know. Um, when I talk about six, nine, uh, particularly, I don't think he ever really lived that life. I think he was around a lot of guys who have at one point lived that life are still living that life. And, uh, we're kind of using him. And uh, outside of that, uh, I don't really have much to say about it. I don't particularly like his music, um, but I that doesn't mean I'm gonna be like fuck this guy. Like but, I don't but, really. But wait, but wait. Here's the thing. You know, it's like well, I know there are a lot of people who do fuck with his music, but on top of it, like I I feel like that's not even a super crazy take because at the end of the day, like. <laughs> If he was making music and only making music, would as many people that are currently be paying attention? Like it's the antics that draw people to, you know, it's it, it's the antics that bring the boys to the yard, you know, like it's, you know, that's the antics are the milkshake. I mean, I, I don't know if you, you've you been paying attention. You don't need Think to. Because, all the people you know, who this... don't even know what a dope reference that is because they're too <laughs> fucking young. But sorry, please continue. I'm sorry. I just have to. You're a guy. Oh, that, that. That, that reference is still in rotation. Um, I don't know. So, I I, th I think it's still. In, I saw a meme. I don't know. The other, I asked like a fifteen-year-old white girl in fucking tenth grade. I don't know. Ki kinda, 
kind of. Maybe. Okay, continue. I, 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 you killed uh, it. You snapped. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, uh, you know, his new album cover, I don't know if you saw, but it's like literally him coming out of the fucking Looney Tunes rings. You know, as yeah. like a cartoon. He's like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, well, I mean, it fits. It fits. It make it gives you insight into he's telling you he's fucking trolling you. And yet yeah. you, you can't say no anyway. You're still like you're still tuned in every fucking night at 8 p.m. And same same Takashi time team, same Takashi channel. Yeah, but hip hop isn't what it once once was. I think hip hop in many ways was. I mean, underground for a long time, man. Like, I just, yeah, okay, we had the Pox and the Biggies and all this shit, but it's like, dude, like, 2008, 9, 10 is when shit just now, to me, hip-hop is pop music, right? Depending on the type of music and the artists and all this other shit, you know, nobody's, like, listening to fucking break beats on the radio. I wish they were, but they're not. Um, but when you when you have this guy, it's just, like, it's just different. He, there are 12-year-old kids I remember uh, when that, what the fuck is it called? Gooba? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so when that came out, uh, I, I, I wasn't on social media and somebody was like, yo, you got to see this Gooba video. And I was like, okay. And I watched it and there's all these thick women twerking and all this other shit. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Okay, cool. And I saw the snippet uh, on his Instagram because a friend showed me that. And then somebody was like, like, yeah, like you the shit. And I like was like, who is this person? And I looked and he's it is literally if you looked up white child in America in the dictionary, it was this kid. Okay. I went to his I went to his Instagram. He's 12 years old. And it's just so funny. And I'm not mad at it. I'm just like, it, it's so funny that hip hop is not necessarily the culture anymore, man. It, it's been like opened up to this, this, to the whole wide world and everyone is comment, uh, commenting on it. Um, or, or should I say modern hip hop, modern rap entertainment? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if you look into like the real sauce, the real music, the real bones of hip hop, you got to do your, your research and, and be a part of a community and a part of a, a, a culture that isn't necessarily, uh, you know, sung, uh, in, in a mainstream manner. Do we do, you know, it's really funny. I was actually, I was doing these, um, which I want you to do with me. I was reviewing old music on, uh, on my, on my fucking Twitch stream or whatever. And I noticed that we kind of say, uh, uh very similarly. Mm. Uh. Isn't that weird? Uh, and if you think about, um, mm -hmm. The uh, yeah, we do that a lot, and that's kind of fucking weird. And maybe that's why people say we're similar. Uh, and you know, when it's starting off a sentence <laughs> with a good and for sure, anyway. Sorry, so uh, but anyway, well, we can hop, we can hop off the Takashi topic. We don't need yeah, to, yeah, all right, anything. whatever. What has it been 10 minutes? Yeah, it's it's, it's been 10 straight minutes. Yo, mind you, like, mm -hmm. I'm fucking with this, so I'm here. Like we're I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here as well. I'm here as yeah, well. Yeah, we got time. So yeah. I, I'll give you. I'll give you at least from starting time two hours at least. Oh, th thank you, sir. Thank you for sure. You are the man. Thank you. Yes. Um, yes. so so now that you've you know, kind of completely left the industry, I, I I imagine at this point like you you have no contractual obligations or anything like that. You're you're totally like free guy. I mean, contractually, I think I got like a mixtape and an album on Def Jam and um you know uh Tribe Called Quest had another album under their their shit after their 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 album before um <clears throat> Five Dog passed away and posthumously they had uh released that with him hmm. I it's funny so just so you kind of know the severity I don't know that I've talked about this actually but uh I while making this before at the beginning of making this album was like, okay, I got a mixtape. I don't know. What do I do? Bobby Tarantino three, I guess. And then after that I'll do ultra 85 and then that'll be it. And I didn't want to do that shit. I didn't want to do the same thing. You know, I've got 10,000 plus unreleased songs that I've done under my, you know, 15 years of doing this. A lot of them are shit. Uh, very like, like I say, you know, you never saw Kobe and Jordan all the you know shots they missed in rehearse, you know, in practicing or whatever. Um, but I don't know, man. It's just um, I've been very, 
I don't know, man. I've just been in my, in my own zone. And when it comes to music in general, sorry if I'm all like off topic here, I've just not really given a shit about it, S- especially since re- it was like the middle of, sorry, putting out this album that I realized I just don't give a fuck anymore. And I know that might sound mean, especially when I think, oh, I have fans and I have this, but no, I will still be there to service them, to be there for them. I will still create content. I will still go on tour because I love to perform. And now it's like, I don't have to go out and just perform some new fucking album every time to sell tickets and do all this. Like, dude, I've said how, you know, the original um, Under Pressure title track is like 10 minutes. I've never done the whole thing. I've only ever done like the hype first half. Like, I'm excited to now uh, do the whole thing and, and do maybe certain songs that aren't as popular, but who gives a shit? Because... Now I'm not going on tour for kids to pop Molly in the fucking 80,000th row in the back. Like I want to do underplays and I want to, you know, play for two to 5,000 people fucking max and, and, and really enjoy that. Um, but yeah, tangent. Okay. Well, I, the, the reason I asked that was because I wanted to know now that you're sort of like on the other side of that vortex and, you know, contractually obligated or not, you don't give a fuck at this point, you're out. Like there are still a lot of people who especially watch me, uh, who are sort of fighting to get into the music industry and almost in a way like, you know, view like a, a Fantano review is like a gateway into that and, and a host of other things as well. A retweet from a certain person, a collab with a which, certain person. Which it is, which it is. Don't, don't downplay yourself. It, well, it is, man. You've done a lot. Let me, let me just say this really quick, dude. Hmm. You've done a lot. And, um, not as much as you. I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we've, we've, sp- we've spoken about this a little bit, bro. Like you, you, you have power. And because I've watched you before I I was relevant enough for you to review, when you've given me negative reviews, you've also given me a lot of praise and said a lot of really great things about me. It like, you know, it, it fucking hit me, you know, and it is what it is. And I just want to say, sorry, to, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, derail you from what you were going to say, but... I was going to ask you about I, this later anyway, so... I just want to say that you are... Um, you're really great at what you do. I respect you. And because I respect you uh, and I've spoken to others who do, and I know so many out there respect you, we do value your opinion because, bro, you're not just fucking doing some bullshit. You're not a review guy. You're not just a guy who's like doing reactions all the time. And they're like, oh, that was, did you hear that line about the Revenant? And he was like the bear. Like, you're not that guy. Like you are, you go in depth. And if you want to shit on something, you fucking shit on it. You go, oh, I don't know about that or I don't know about this or whatever the case may be. And, and, and you do also give people their kudos. You know, it is hard. I'm going to be honest when I try to – when an, any artist, but, you know, they step out of their lane, whether it's a supermarket or confessions or this or that, and they want to do something completely different. And then it's like commercially successful, right, but then like kind of obliterated by somebody like you. But at the end of the day – on every fucking video in the description, it says, and I know this like a Bible verse. Y'all know this is just my opinion, right? Um, however, that opinion is very valid and a lot of people respect it. I respect it. I appreciate it. And when you shit all over me, I can't watch it. But when you shit all over Chance, I mean, that was great. No, I'm just <laughs> but when you, you know, when you do these things, it's also that form of, of entertainment. Um, and you do a very good job at it. So I just, I just want to say that, and I do want to validate you as an artist and as a creative. And I, I want to thank you for even taking the time to review my shit, whether you liked it or you didn't, because if I ever do create that, whatever it's going to be outside of logic and this and that, and whether you like it or you don't, I, I'm just happy that someone who has sp- literally spent his adult and mature life uh, researching and understanding music would take the time to shit on me. So thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, let, okay. Now I'm going to validate you because we're just validating each other right now. <laughs> just validate um, right now. You know, look, I massively respect you as well. And, uh, you know, that that is not linked at all. 
um, to whether or not I enjoy, we're wearing the same flannel. Yes, yeah, I know. wearing the same wearing the same flannel. But you know whether or not I enjoy your music, whether or not I enjoy your music does not strengthen or weaken you know that respect. Um, because at the end of the day, like it's it's not even so much about the music that derives that, but just the way you uh, carry yourself, handle yourself, and uh, you know I I know that you, that might seem uh, like a weird thing to say to you because maybe on a personal level you know like. Well, during this time or that time, I was unhappy. I was depressed. I was suffering. I couldn't handle this. I couldn't handle that. But, you know, at the end of the day, like what is admirable, uh, admirable about what you do and what you've done, um, whether you whether you decide to continue it at all, like if you decide next week to come out of retirement, I'm not going to make a video like, fuck that fucking liar, loser <laughs> logic that that fucking bastard can't fucking make up his mind of what he wants to do. Um, no, it's 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 really like uh, what I admire about what you've done is that you do it to the beat of your own drum you're you're just marching at your own pace and you know i don't know what it is about uh, you know the the way that you have decided to conduct yourself that leads to that you know i think um you know maybe it's a mix of your success maybe it's just your personality maybe, maybe it's a couple of different factors together but you know you're you're really just kind of doing shit on your own terms and you know i i think that is where a lot of the um accusations and criticisms of, of, of corniness come from, because at the end of the day, like, I feel like a lot of people, uh, whether it comes to hip hop or other genres as well, aren't used to their favorite musicians or stars or musicians or stars that they see are popular and are relevant, like being real, being vulnerable, being sensitive, like they're used to the facade of like, you know, this unbroken sort of like, I'm always tough. I'm always cool. I always know the perfect thing to say. I'm always on the hippest, coolest trend. I'm always like looking my best. I'm always like dressed in the dopest attire. I'm working with this designer, that designer, and the other thing. And you know, rare, rare is it that anybody, even in the age of social media, I mean, I, I think in the Instagram age, uh, a lot of artists just kind of use social media to reinforce that facade that, um, you know, just like they're, they're just like these unbroken, just walls of confidence and sort of taste and superiority uh, that no one could even ever aspire to. And, you know, you yourself are like, no, this is just like me. I'm not trying to be anything fucking else but me. And, you know, the things I'm doing, whether or not you like them, I'm doing them because I like them. And I'm saying the things that I'm saying because I'm thinking them. You know, I'm not th I'm not saying them because I think uh, other people are going to take to it or I think it's a really cool thing for to, to, to say that uh, uh, people are going to want to buy. Um, you know, you're uh, and and look, I mean, things have sort of worked out for you uh, really well being true to yourself in that way. And I, I, I admire that. I think that's great. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, well, part of the reason I, I appreciate that so much is I, I, I don't always sort of meet that standard, but I try to aspire to that myself. You know, it's like, I try to just to be as honest as fucking possible because I, I, I know think meet, I think you meet that standard. I think you're yourself. I, 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 well, I mean, you know, I, I think there are, I, I'm, I'm myself and I meet that standard in terms of music. Um, you know, the, there are times when I feel like, uh, I sort of question how real could I, or should I be like in the social media space? Because you know, I, honestly, I agree yeah. and not cut you off. I, I understand that. Here's the difference I think between me and someone like yourself hmm. in a good way though. On a bad day, you're not you're not gonna go on not not that what you were saying wasn't good. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying like, uh, on a bad day, you're not gonna go on YouTube like one of these fucking weirdo people and be like, I'm just so depressed and I think I'm thinking about oh, ending do, do like it a, all. Do like a crying on the kitchen floor yeah, video. That's like that's it, bullshit. It would, get, it would get millions of views though. It would. And, but, but, if, but if I'm crying, but if I'm crying on the kitchen floor, I'll I'll, I'll be tweeting about it. I'll be on Twitter doing. <laughs> but the difference is. As an as an artist who expresses himself that way, is I actually will do that on a song, right? Sure. Uh, I did it on Dark Place. You know, I didn't want to do that song. Uh, it was it was supposed to be on this mixtape that was never going to come out. And my friends were like, "Dude, you got to put this on. You got to put this on. You got to put this on." And I'm like, "I don't want to talk about this shit. I don't want to talk about being a millionaire and still experiencing depression and anxiety. Nobody's going to give a fuck about that." But I think they're right, and I think I actually did do it in a way that excuse me, was in and of itself uh, relatable. Um, so I feel you and I hear you and I understand that. And you are an entertainer 
And there is a part of you. I mean, bro, we're both on right now. I, I, I just, you know, I'm maybe a little more uh, buzzed than you are. So, you know what I mean? But it's like at the end of the day, we are on. We are always on. When there's a camera on me, I make sure I, I, I you, know, I'm, I, you know, I'm a little PC. I don't want to, you know, piss anybody off or this or, or whatever the case may be. But it's like, bro, like. Because that's our job. Because we actually care. We we care. We 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 may have an opinion that differs from one of our most hardcore fucking fans in the world, unless it is extremely detrimental, such as like fucking racism. You know what I mean? Or like fuck Trump. I don't care. I don't give a fuck, fuck Trump. I don't care. But you know, if there's these other things, right? Um, you know, we don't want to make those people feel bad. Those are just our opinions. We're on a bit. That's what we do. We're entertainers. So um, I think with, with all that being said, I think you are very authentic. I think you are very yourself. Um, and I think that's why I always felt uh, a little I, – I felt like I was being my most honest and authentic self when creating music and you were being your most honest and authentic self when, when critiquing it. Um, which may have made me feel a certain way and has made me feel a certain way as an artist, but honestly retiring and stepping away has also made me realize like, yo, that's your fucking opinion. The fact that we can have uh, conversations outside of interviews or have this conversation in, in, in an interview lets me know that like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter if you don't like a fucking album I did, who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like it really, it's not that deep. Like, can we still connect on other things uh, as equals to me, that's what matters. And I think that's kind of what's missing between a lot of artists and a lot of critics, uh, and a lot of people on the fucking internet. And, and I think that's what leads to a lot of artists depression because they don't, they don't understand how to disconnect from what just someone likes or doesn't like about your music. And then you as a person, because if somebody who's never shaken my hand, shook my hand a day in their life, uh, wants to say that I'm some fuck boy as a human being, as a person. It's like, yo, this person doesn't even know me. And if I met them and shook their hand and was kind and respectful and we both like Tarantino and fucking Cowboy Bebop and Weezer and all this shit and they still don't like me, well, they're probably a fucking asshole, you know? So it's like having that understanding <laughs> that uh, that it's, it's not that deep and there's like low-key six degrees of separation between me and anyone who's never shook my hand in the first place and is only basing judgment off my art. The same to you via artists who watch you, bro. So, sorry. <laughs> there it is. Well, thank you very much, um, yeah. you know, for that back and forth, that validation. People are just going to say we're talking to ourselves in the fucking mirror here at this point. Yeah, well, that's what they've been <laughs> saying. Um, nice. I like it. Should I put the glasses back on? I'm going to have to piss in like five minutes, but it's all good. Oh, that's fine. Another pee break? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's um, cool. <laughs> to go off of a little bit of what you were saying, like now that you've had the ability to separate yourself away from all of that, the more personal feelings about the takes on what you've done and the industry at large, like is, is there anything else that for the longest time you feel like you didn't have the ability to say that, you, that else that you would like to sort of throw out there or say? Can I have a moment? Okay. All right. Um, Illmatic is overrated. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's wow. not it. That, that would not. have been that would have been a complex headline yeah. tomorrow. I know. I mean, dude, so much of this is already a fucking headline that they're going to be in. Fuck complex, first of all. <laughs> they can suck my dick, dude. All they do is fucking take my words out of context. I had this. I had this. Uh, I, I, I spoke in a, in a rap genius interview, and I said that the first time I heard get Good Kid, Mad City, I didn't really like it that much, um, and. They were like, yeah, Logic says the first time when he heard Good Kid, Bad City, he didn't like it. Like, it's like bullshit. And then SZA came out and was like, y'all are fucking extra. This is clickbait bullshit. What I said was the first time I heard it, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't really connect to it. It was just weird. He's doing all these voices and I'm like, what the fuck is this and that and all this shit and blah, blah, blah. And then a couple months later, I would like, got, you know, took my head out of my ass and I really listened to it. And I was like, oh, this voice is a character. Oh, wow. The way he's doing this is actually extremely fucking innovative and nobody's doing this. And 
you know, I definitely bid Kendrick once or twice after that album. <laughs> so yeah, like, the, it but, is what but, it is. But, you know, also like what what annoys me about a lot of that um, elitism around like you have to like this certain thing if you don't fucking say that this is the greatest thing of all time. Like you've you've sinned against God. Um, you know, because at the time, look, I very much remember when that album dropped because yep. I loved Section Eighty. I went to. I didn't like that makeup song though. Uh, that, that's that's yeah. one of the weaker ones, but I loved yeah. Section 80. Section 80's fire. I was, you know, desperate to see Kendrick at South by that year. Mm. Um, didn't see him because he wouldn't show up to any of his sets on time because I had to go somewhere else. Then I met him in a back alley behind a venue as I was leaving. And he was just I like, met Kendrick in a back alley at South by, by the way. Yeah, and, 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 because because this, this, is, this is basically going to end like Fight Club. And who's going to be Tyler Durden? <laughs> I know. I don't fucking who's gonna, know. Who's bro. Tyler? We'll find out at the Can't end. Can't believe of the we both wore this, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> well, I, anyway. I was I was sure you were going to show up as fucking what's his name, Kip. <laughs> I was sure. I was sure you're going to do the whole shit like this and be fucking biracial. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Cal would right, never sorry. joke. Cal would never joke uh, about. It. He would never joke about. Cal, that. Cal, Cal. But anyway, uh, um, yeah. so so you know, I was, but still. Um, was super hyped for whatever he was going to come out with because at that moment he said to me, I'm working on the greatest thing. It's going to blow your mind, this, that, and the other thing. And I remember the first track, like the first single, and again, not everybody was paying attention at the time, but still the people who was were- Was it Swimming Pools? The, no, the, the first track Bitch, that broke that? was Backseat Freestyle. Oh yeah, and yeah. the reception the reception was Kendrick sold out. He's a sellout. He's just really? rapping about yes because that song is just fucking the world. And I'm this and I'm I that. I didn't it's get just, that. I didn't get that. Lot, no, didn't. Lots of responses were like, "Oh man, he's he's not conscious anymore. He's not going to do this. He's not going to do that." And then it just sort of totally flipped the script. You know, once the entire album dropped. So you know, it's it's not like everybody was there. Like, <laughs> I yeah, I totally yeah. understand this. And <laughs> you know, like you know, not not everybody was like rap expert the minute that Good Kid Mad City dropped and was just like, you know, ready to understand all the narrative layers of the album. Um, because, again, that record hadn't dropped and a record like that uh, hadn't dropped for uh, a long time and, and really yet for this generation, because, yeah. you know, Kendrick Kendrick was really kind of speaking to a new crop of, of hip hop fans. Yeah, it was a different time. That, that's why I think it was probably so hard for me to digest at first, right? Because I was just so used to a certain type of rap. It was either like Joey Badass or Drake, mm. you know, I mean, more or less, you know, you had your big Sean's and people kind of in the middle and doing their thing or whatever. But yeah, it just didn't really, I don't know. I mean, and I'd, I'd been listening to him since overly dedicated. Here's a fun fact. When I discovered Kendrick Lamar, I didn't realize that he was actually as big as he was even when he released Overly Dedicated. Hmm. I messaged him on Facebook. <laughs> it was like, hey, man, dope raps. You want to do a collab sometime? <laughs> I was, it was like 2010, and I'm new to Facebook. I had no fucking idea, bro. I didn't even know what was going on. And I'm like, yeah, hey, hey there, Kendrick. Like, I, I just thought he was like, you know, I don't know some fucking rap guy from like Florida. Like I had no idea. What I wanted to ask you earlier before we got off on a tangent was now that you're sort of on the other side of this vortex uh, with all the kids watching, they're trying to break into the music industry. What's kind of one of the biggest takeaways or warnings from that experience that you would like to bestow upon a young, naive artist who's kind of, you know, desperate to uh, find their breakthrough moment. Uh, great, great question. It's a different era. Dude, I came up on two dope boys and this song is sick and blogs and, you know, if, you know, my manager had a really great relationship with some of these people and because of that, he could get me posted. Now, just because he could get me posted didn't necessarily mean that people would uh, identify with or just like the music, like a lot of artists, though they happen to. Um, it's completely different nowadays. You have your, uh, your rap caviars and uh, which I don't even think necessarily... Um, respectfully you know carl cherry and everybody at spotify they do a really great job at uh at uh curating uh these playlists and that's really cool and that's awesome um but there's not really a lot of playlists whether it's itunes or here or this or that to be able to truly discover new artists i think a lot of new artists are a lot of them are on youtube i guess some of them are still on soundcloud i mean that shit's like fucking four years old as far as being a soundcloud rapper now and mostly soundcloud rappers have like face tattoos which isn't an issue i'm just saying when it comes to 
uh, you know, like real rap shit, I would be fucking lost, dog. I would have no idea if I was some kid in 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 his basement like I was ten years ago. And especially now, considering technology is insane. You have a laptop and a shit mic, and you sound like Drake. Like it's it's fucking crazy uh, if you do it right. And uh, so I, I I don't necessarily know. I don't really have any advice on how to make it today. I'm going to be honest. I'm completely out of fucking touch. I have no idea how to grind to get ears on music. Mm. Um, But I would say that if you do have ears on you, don't be scared to take a deal. Uh, And that's a real thing because, um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no, stay independent. It's all about independent and make your money and all this other shit. If somebody's really going to throw some crazy fucking money at you, take that money and fucking run. Because at the end of the day, this is how I feel and this is what I did. Like, bro, I can't tell you how many times respectfully and it was a different regime. Def Jam, like, didn't want to put my fucking album out. They didn't want me to release music. They were just fucking holding me and holding me and holding me. So I was like, fuck y'all. I'm going to release Welcome to Forever. I'm going to release... The while you wait EP before this, and then I'm going to go on tour. I'm going to do shit myself. So I'm kind of like, get as much money as you can. Like literally, like if somebody's like, yo, I'm going to give you $500,000 advance, take that shit. I mean, that's really like unrealistic. I only had a $200,000 advance and I had a really great buzz at my time. But um, honestly, do that. Make sure you're not getting fucked. I mean, have a great lawyer, have a great team, make sure you're good. But at the end of the day, if somebody's offering you really great money that can change your life, take it. But it doesn't it doesn't stop there. It really doesn't stop there. It then goes into uh, your own team, your own videographers, your producers, your own engineers, people who can mix your music so that whether your fucking label wants to support you or not, you are supporting yourself. The only reason I got where I was and am today is because of my team because of the people that supported me and truly believed in me and that we were like all right well fuck you def jam i'm gonna just do this shit myself since you don't want to support me and once again different regime you know so i don't want anybody out there all fucking feeling some type of way i fuck with you guys you guys are cool but like the old regime fuck boys dude i was under shipped i think they only shipped twenty two thousand or twenty thousand Physical copies, mind you. I feel like a dinosaur even saying that. This is a totally different time in in music. This is 2014, I believe, my first album came out. And um, yeah, so they only shipped 22,000 copies physically around the United States of America only. Meanwhile, TI, they shipped 200,000 plus copies. So that should just let you know how much this major label did not believe. And guess what? I came in number two. And respectfully, I believe the only reason I came in number two is because I was under shit because Rat Pack, I kind of talked about this on uh, Five Hooks, I believe, on the second half. Love that song uh, where I where I basically say, uh, you know, Def Jam under shit me, uh, you know, Rat Pack had to ask him to unbox it from the back. What the fuck is that? Fast forward 2020 on the face of the label, whatever the fuck. And uh, and it's real. So I would say, like, never, um, never think that some label or some fucking conglomerate monopoly of a you know record label system is going to break you just because they're saying that they can and it, honestly if you are sitting down in a record label you're hot you're doing something dog you are doing something so know your value uh understand that but understand that just because you sign on the dotted line it does not go away i can't tell you how many fucking rappers i know <laughs> that I know of, should I say, that have like gotten deals and then literally spent all their money on like diamonds. Like it's like, bro, chill, which I get, which is also like a systemic rap hood thing, which I also get. And that's a whole nother fucking conversation. But at the end of the day, support yourself, love yourself, build a fucking really good team and educate yourself, bro. I have educated myself on the fucking uh, commas, dollar signs, zeros, on what goes into a percentage of a hook and a this and a verse and a beat and production and 50-50 splits, which is really 100%, but it, uh, on both ends and all this other shit. Educate yourself, believe in yourself, motivate yourself, push yourself. But definitely get that money uh, if, if a deal comes through and it makes sense and you have good representation. Outside of that, I have no fucking idea how you get started. Maybe maybe uh, do like a gooba. Well, look, look <laughs> here's, here's, here's what... Look, um, look, if you're going to like, let's say you start a new project and then you're going to come through with that. You know, I, my recommendation, you need uh, a TikTok dance. You need a color show video, color show performance. Yeah. You need a rap genius, lyrical explanation video. You need that. That's still relevant. That's still a thing. 
You need uh, a negative Fantano tweet and review. You need, that. <laughs> you need a Cole Bennett music video, Lyrical yeah, Lemonade, yeah, the Cole Bennett sure. music video. Um, and uh, pff, I'm, not, I'm not sure what else you need. Oh, you need, you need maybe an Instagram meme. So the TikTok, the Instagram, the Cole Bennett, the color show, the, oh, you need a Kenny Beats the Cave performance you need, you need a biracial that's what you need you need you, your own biracial thing well that's that's, that's your meme. that's your meme but you need a meme your new project needs a different meme that is true i don't know i we'll, we'll figure it out me personally i think i i think i can do it um i don't know it's gonna be hard if like this character i create is faceless or a mask or a fucking mf doom or something I, oh mf doom wannabe that's the meme there it is <laughs> mf mf tomb we're, we're we're already there we're already All there right. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, I, I wanted to ask you about no pressure now that we're uh, uh, well over an hour into this interview. Um, and I'm chilling, by the way. I am fucking chilling. Yo, rookie, can you pour me another 18 year McAllen? It's upstairs next to the fucking spot. Sorry. Love you, dude. Big boss energy. Appreciate it. Um, in your opinion, now that the record has been out and you've been a little distanced from its release, uh, a little, <laughs> a li- just a little bit, a tiny bit. Understatement. What do you feel like is what, what? What has been the key to the album being received so well? I mean, I'm not sure of the numbers off the top of my head, but like, you know, I I could say for me personally, it's one of my favorite projects you've done, and there are some serious like, look, there are some serious fucking logicators in 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 my comments and my mentions, like you know, who are mercilessly you know making fun of the fact that we were even going to talk to each other. Yeah. And, and, a, and a whole host of other things. But like even they during like the Twitch stream were like, hey, this, this, is, pre- this is pretty good. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I had to like stop for a second and be like, are you guys being serious? Like, I know I'm enjoying this, but are, are you, you like me? legitimately are, like, are you legitimately enjoying this right now? So it's like there were some serious like haters who were kind of like, you know, B- BTFO by, by the by the quality of that record. Like, you know, what, what, what do you feel like went into the sauce of that album that, that sort of, you know, rendered that result? Great question. Um, I think probably a career of my career, uh, when I was really on the internet every single day, especially after, you know, confessions for like six months, um, I, mainly like two months and then I would be on and off for about six months. And then that's when I just completely cut it off. Um, I saw a lot of people being like, this is the reason I got into hip hop and now he's making this type of shit and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of things that I saw were like this, he's why I got into rap. Like he's why I got into rap. He's why I got into hip hop. Like I listened to under pressure and, and he was talking about tribe called quest and Nas and big L and this and all this, all his favorites. And I went and discovered those people because of logic. Um, I also saw a lot of people saying like, Oh yeah, it's first it's regardless what you may believe, but, uh, yeah, his first album's classic. Like that was a classic album. You know what I mean? Like it came out as classic or, or tits, or it was something, you know, that was so different for me, which was actually just extremely inspired by Deltron 3030. And I just was like, I wanted to do that actually on my own. And I had this idea. And then a buddy of mine, Nick Huff was like, have you listened to Deltron? And I was like, what the fuck is that? And then you got fucking, uh, you got our, our boy, uh, Del rapping about freestyle battles and all this gnarly shit that I was like, God damn, that is a lot of fucking liquor dog. Fuck it. Mm. And so I think, uh, I think it is a career long thing. Um, I think a majority of people that have talked shit about me at one point have actually liked a lot of the music that I've made and they've seen me kind of go in different directions and they didn't agree with those things or, you know, you could have been the this or the that of rap or whatever the case may be. And I never gave a shit about that. There was a time when I did. And it's funny that when I cared, I was shit on. And then now in retrospect, people will, will you know, there's, there is, I mean, if you, I, I was actually pleasantly surprised on hip hop Twitter when they're like, a lot of people was like, who's the best debut album in the last 10 years. And people will be like under pressure logic. And I'm like, what the fuck? Don't you guys like hate me? Um, when I was on, uh, uh, the internet. And I think that is something 
that I realized, wow, there's actually a lot of people rooting for me. And though I made this mainstream music that has been extremely successful, and I, I say that proudly and, you know, platinum records and all this other shit to this particular demographic of people who didn't like it. Like you said earlier, even regarding Kendrick, like, okay, it's mainstream and a lot of people like it, it you know, in the, that, excuse me, atmosphere. Fuck it. These people didn't like it. And I respect their opinion. And I think they really were like, come on, man. Like, come on. Like, give us something, man. Like, come on. Like, I know you got it in you, man. And in my, in my head, I was like, yeah, I've had this in me. And I could have done this over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I just didn't want to. I wanted to rap on trap beats. And when I did for the first time, for the first Bobby Tarantino, you know, people were, fans were like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you talking about? I'm a slave. I'm a slave. What the fuck are you talking about? And this and da, da, da. And I was like, man. And I always, even though it was hard to digest and take in, there were still always so many more people who loved it and enjoyed it. And because of that, I was like, okay, dope. Every time I go off, like, the edge here and try something different the 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 venues are still getting bigger and bigger so it's like as long as like you said if i stay true to myself and i'm just fucking doing me like cool whether people people like it or not i know i have people uh, fans there rat pack you know fucking crying for front row center like you saved my life or i was going through a breakup and i was falling in love for supermarket or i was this or i was that or whatever it, it, it meant a lot to me, and that's why I continued to do it. It wasn't until I decided to do uh, No Pressure where I would like – actually, here, I have the book. I've shown this in a few interviews here. This is the book. This is No Pressure here. This is the entire fucking – oh, this is uh, A to Z right there. It looks like a little were. Bible. It is my little Bible. It's my Bobby Bible. And this, okay. is, uh, this is my fucking – this is the whole album, dude. And, 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 I, and I filled this, this bitch up. And I hadn't written pen on, on paper in 15 years. And I wanted to do something different because I wanted to challenge myself. And I think, sorry to wrap all this up, uh, that um, the reason it was so well-received is because to this circle of people, I was like fucking like, I was like Stallone, you know? I was like fucking out of it, man, you know? And I was like on heroin, <laughs> And then I got clean and I came back and I fucking knocked somebody's lights out. But the fact of the matter is I've been planning this album for so long and I had been planning the Ultra 85 album and all this other shit. But the thing is I I, I didn't – I almost more so wanted to do that Ultra 85 shit to like finish the story of Thomas and Kai from Incredible True Story and all this other – whatever the fuck. But then I was like, man, fuck all that. I don't want to do that. And I decided to say no. And for the first time in my career – to, to no to money, no to things I didn't want to do. Uh, yeah, I went in that pop mainstream space and I did it because I had a fucking blast and I made millions and millions of dollars. Like, why the fuck wouldn't I do that? Like, I had so much fun and got rich as shit. So, like, yes, that's why I did that. And then when I'm sitting back, not to sound like a fucking douchebag, but like with my fucking money. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm in a mansion and I'm looking at a wall full of plaques. I'm like, this is old. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do some real fucking shit. And I barely made a, barely will make a fucking dollar on this album because I used so many samples and I was so true to form and so true to sampling and hip hop and everyone that's inspired me. You know, this is a letter to hip hop. Like you hear the Kanye, you hear the Erica and the Tribe and the Nas and the Big L. And the, I don't and I wear it right here on my plaid yellow sleeve uh, on this album. I just did the fucking fun uh, and and I think that's why. I think people are like, "Yo, this is a return to form." This dude didn't give a shit about the MTV award song or the this or the that like fuck the Grammys I've never gotten a Grammy fuck it I didn't do the song that I thought would be the this I didn't piggyback off of 1-800 and try to I just said fuck it dog and I wrote on the, I wrote in this fucking journal like a diary dog like I literally wrote I just wrote I wasn't like well this is a hook yeah, I wasn't J. Cole that's the hook right there I was like nah I was just fucking writing and rapping and doing my thing and I think people genuinely, wholeheartedly fucking felt it. And, and they were happy. And I think they were pleasantly surprised 
after what they perceived, whatever was their personal opinion of a supermarket and a Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which I love. That's why I fucking made it. But I think they heard this and they went, that's what we wanted. And that's what we've been wanting. And I think after doing different things and trying different things and stepping out of the box, whether it was success to someone else or failure to someone else, those people who really wanted this finally got it. And because of that, they were very happy. And I was very happy. God damn, was I talking fucking 15 minutes? Shit. Yeah, I mean, I'll say personally, I thought that you were more unfiltered than than usual on the record. Mm-hmm. And, and on top of it, uh, I thought the production was next level, too. You know, like Appreciate heard him say is one I of made my, that beat is one of my favorite fucking beats of this year. And not, not, not only was I amazed by that beat when I first heard it, but then I was further blown away by it when I went back and I heard the source material and I was like, oh my fucking God, the way he grabbed this and he grabbed that and he grabbed the other fucking thing. You went through that song like a fucking shopping cart in the store and you're Definitely. like, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to, you know, just get a dash of this, a dash of that, a bit of the keyboard, a bit of the vocal. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And then, and then you, you and then you to, before you tell me, and then you totally okay. just like reoriented it into just a killer fucking instrumental. Thank you. That, that right there makes up for every time you ever shit on me. Um, so uh, no ID, uh, told me something <clears throat> when I very first signed to Def Jam in 2012, I come in the studio and I'm like, hey, man, you know those drums on, uh, you know, fucking good morning and the shit you did over on this and that and all this Kanye shit. I'm just like, Kanye, that's going to be a meme. Are you ready for it? I'm ready for it. So uh, all this Kanye, Kanye, Kanye shit. <clears throat> and he goes, kid, listen, man, I get it. You're inspired. Okay. But taking Kanye's flow with Kanye's drums and a Kanye sample and some Kanye hip hops with some Kanye swag and trying to dress like Kanye is like making a fucking chocolate sundae with a chocolate banana and a chocolate ice cream and chocolate sprinkles. and You can't do that. He's like, look, he's like, I'm inspired. I take from people. It is what it is. It's hip hop. It's fucking music. But you need regular rainbow sprinkles with some vanilla ice cream. And a Sunday with some chocolate sauce and some he's like, you gotta, you gotta blend it, you know, you can't just take all this other shit. And uh I think on this album I really I really got that in in, in a way. Um uh, and, and I think I also did it in the right way. It's like, duh, this is good morning. Doom, 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 doom. Like it's like this is this is good morning. Like it is the good morning drums. But when you take a sample that has never really been sampled popularly, however, though, it is in that graduation realm, but I flipped it in the way that I did. And these fucking lyrics, dog, are from my heart and soul. And you're, 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 you're putting in all this different shit. But yeah, it's, it's a shopping cart, but that's authentic. It's like I was inspired by this plaid sleeve right there. I was inspired by this, but like, yo, fuck that. Like, They say I ain't good enough. They say I ain't hood enough. Even if I signed a Yeezy, I wouldn't be good enough. It's obvious, like out the gate, you know? Um, So I appreciate, man. Man, it means a lot, dude. Like, it means a lot, all right? (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. It means a lot to me uh, that you would say this and that you would take the time to interview me because... I'm a fucking idiot. And for so long, I felt like you were like this nemesis because you had your own opinion. You know, I, I, th- I did. I did. I was like, fuck look, this guy. It's, it's, as, as, you know, as, you as, long, as long as we're healing. OK, look, you, you got you, you. I picked out the beat. It is an amazing fucking beat. Would, would, you, would, you like, would you like to tell me off right now? Like, I can get, I'll give you 30 seconds. I'm going to tell you, you off. 30 seconds. Are you, you ready? Here we seconds. go. You, go go right, for here it. Go. You can tell me go. fuck you. You could tell me anything. I'm really glad we're friends now. Uh, I got 30 seconds. Fuck off. You're a nice person. Uh, I'm sure you're a good dad. I would bet on that. Um, decent lover, perhaps. Um, I enjoy your reviews. We're almost there. Uh, you, you, are, you have been very not nice sometimes, but it's your opinion. Fuck you. Okay, there you go. 30 wow. Seconds. Obl- fuck <laughs> obliterated. Obliterated. I'm just, I'm being, I'm actually lit now at this point. So this is the most honest me. Ask me how I feel about Joe Budden. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how Joe Bun, Joe Bun might not know how he feels about himself yeah, right now. We, we don't, yeah. we don't know. We don't it's know. All good. We don't know. All right. Um, I promised we would take some, some fan questions. So let, let, let me, let me do that. Let me, all right. No that. fuck boy shit. Here we go. Let me, let me, yeah, we, we will, uh, we will filter. We'll filter. Just keep it to my the mods have, my mods have life. filtered. I will filter additionally on a personal level Appreciate and, uh, and, and, and go from there. But, uh, but thank you very much for being uh, an open book uh, during all of this. You got and, it, man. Uh, uh, f- uh, just to the mods, feel free to throw some more questions in here because I know people are probably using that tab and putting some more in there. Uh, make sure to uh, update this shit. All right. Um, hey, it's P.O. wants to know, uh, I guess maybe in general, but even for this uh, new record, they want to know uh, what sample was the hardest to get clear? Technically, the first half of five hooks before we sampled Tori Imoa, and I called him and was like, can I do this before I get all fucking gassed up and do it, um, was, uh, what the fuck is that? Take a look at my girlfriend, Super Shramp. I literally sampled, uh, it wasn't that song, first of all. <laughs> it was a totally different song. It was so fire. I'm going to send that shit to you. Hey, yo, Rookie, tell Six to send me the original sample for... Uh, five hooks so i can send it to fontano for a personal listen um wow and it was fucking dope okay and uh and it was really fire that's why it's really funny because at the end of dad bod i actually say super tramp and it wasn't that we couldn't get it cleared because it goes i couldn't get the fucking suit and it goes beep but it was super tramp uh sample cleared but it's it wasn't that we couldn't get it cleared it's that deb my sample clearance woman who does everybody fucking Nas and drake and she's the shit she's the sweetest woman in the world very nice uh very nice can you hear this if i play this right now i can't play that i don't i don't hear that god damn it that's my stream deck Okay. And it's it's just Borat going very nice. Anyway, okay. So, um, oh, I, I got a stream deck with uh, sound effects in there too. Does is there one of me saying I'm biracial? So, um, I'm, the, I'm actually going to cut that out and put it in there tomorrow. <laughs> biracial. There you go. Uh, so, um, fucking. <laughs> Uh, what the fuck was I saying? So Super Tramp is 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 one we rapped on this. It was so fucking dope. It was really crazy. But to be fair. The Toro y Moi Chop was way better. And this is one of the very extremely few instances where you you actually swap out a sample and it's it's way better. Basically, I did it, I sent it to Deb, and before she even sent it to their people, she was she was like super tramp clears like a hundred percent of the time. No. Like it's not gonna happen. And I was like, uh, what the fuck is that? What is that song? Uh Gym Class Heroes. I was like, didn't they do it? And she was like, let's not talk about that. It's not happening. And I was like, okay. Um, so I did that. That was one of the hardest. Check this shit out. You ready for this? I can't get into it because I don't want to get into it too deep as far as money. Uh, Soul Food 2. All right. The original uh, Soul Food sample that I, uh, that, I, that I sampled for Soul Food 1 on Under Pressure. It's something that I wanted to redo for many, many years. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I couldn't clear the master. Now, for those of you out there who don't understand, there is a master and then there's an interpolation. A master is basically where uh, a producer, such as myself, will take a fucking song. It's the song. There it is. It's the song. And we take that and we put it in our program and we add dope drums and we bring great musicians to, you know, uh, produce over top of that. And then we make the song and then we put it out. That is what we did for Soul Food 1. However, with the original sample, which is uh, we thought was Danielle Corleone or Corleone. Sorry, sorry, I'm fucking up right now. I'm a little lit, but it's fine. Uh, But it was uh, Meldone. Uh, who is the uh, composer who created this, Frenchman. Uh, He is in his 80s. I believe he's 85 years old. So I I really want everybody to know the fucking extent that I went for this song. So we we, uh, interpolated this. Now, this was at a time where I didn't really understand that interpolation also had to necessarily be paid for. I didn't know this. I was so ignorant to the fact that if I took somebody else's shit, hired a bunch of really great musicians and opera singers to then replay it, that you still had to pay publishing on it. Now there's master and then there's publishing. So for those who don't understand, the master is the song. It's the song. I fucking download it on iTunes, that's the song. But the melody, the beats, the singers, the lyrics, that is what we call publishing or writing. Now writing isn't necessarily just lyrics, it is also uh, instrumentation. 
So long story short, I didn't fucking do that. And then on this time around, I had to pay back what I owed, which I didn't realize, which is a fucking lot of money. I'm a millionaire. It was a lot of motherfucking money, okay, that I had to do for this. And to get the original, and I put that shit on there for you guys, and I paid the fucking price for the art. And, uh, yeah, goddamn, I'm going to try to answer these uh, questions uh, a lot quicker. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just as an aside, yeah. um, interpolating versus sampling, is one generally more expensive than the other, or does it all depend at the end of the day what the person who you are borrowing from is asking for? Very great uh, question. Yes. So if you do a master, that also includes publishing, writing of it. Hmm. If you interpolate where you uh, hire um, or do it yourself, uh, musicians to play the same melody or beat, you only have to pay the writers, so the people who wrote that. But it's almost like, for example, I'm signed to Def Jam. Def Jam owns a part because I've upgraded of my masters. Uh, but let's let's take it back to 2014. Def Jam owns 100% of my masters, um, which means they uh, anyone who wanted to sample me has to pay a master fee, which could be 25,000 plus, depending how much, all the way up to 100 plus thousand dollars this is good this is good to know for my mixtape where i will be sampling you is it free though if it's free you can fucking have it Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be on def jam i believe but go on oh tight very (laughs) tight uh so uh so that's the master so that means that they have to pay for the master fee because the label owns that and then they have to go through and not only pay every individual writer whether it was lyrics So that means if four people wrote lyrics to a song, they all have to be paid. Mm. If there was a guitarist that wrote a a main part of the song, he has to be paid. Mm. And now it's much also more than just being paid. If there's six people on a song, right, like a band or whatever, it's it's like Foo Fighters Fighters or whatever the case may be, every single person has to clear off and give the okay. So if Dave Grohl's like, "Um, yeah, okay, cool, and then so and so and so. But if the guitarist is like, nah, fuck that, you can't do it. So it's, it's, it's a crazy process that involves a village of people to be able to clear something for a little old hip hop sampling logic. I almost said Bob, but yeah, hmm. I'm fucking lit. I'm feeling great. I'm ready for COD after this shit. Thank you for telling us that. This is some real like industry shit that a lot of people don't fucking know and they don't fucking understand. Um, yeah. And this is what fucks, sorry, this is what yeah. fucks with artistic creativity you know what i mean like honestly if i'm just gonna be real and this is not to downplay it i fucking love the album i don't care suck my dick confessions didn't sound the way it did it was it was a lot more fucking musical and dope i mean the raps were the same (laughs) but it's like it was it was there was a lot more to it but there were so many samples that didn't get cleared i cannot believe technically speaking technically speaking no Pressure is a 100% cleared album. The only song that wasn't cleared, I didn't care to pursue out of the uh, knowledge and intelligence of my sample clearance woman, Deb, shout out girl, who was like, just don't even do this. And because of that, it only made the album better. So with that being said. No, I mean, that, that sort of thing, that process does change the sound of an artist and the creative process pretty radically depending on like who it is and what kind of album they're trying to make. Like, you know, I'll say aesthetically, like, let's just say Flatbush Zombies, for example, shout out to them. You know, they dropped that um, really, like really amazing fucking mixtape that was totally killer where I, I forget the title. They're all in the fucking graveyard. Um, yeah. that mixtape is amazing, but that mixtape is also loaded with fucking samples, like to the fucking brim. And then they drop their commercial debut immediately after and production aesthetics totally fucking changed because it's like, you know, you, you can't operate in that same way. Another example is sort of a, like big crit who also like a lot of sample heavy shit in his early mixtapes. And then he did his commercial debut. And I remember there being even some discussion about some things not being cleared, like up to the minute and some songs not sounding the way that he wanted to as a result. And, you know, again, like you said, it kind of fucks with the process. It does. Let me ask you a question because yeah. you're so knowledgeable. I love that. I'm kind of fucking lit at this point. I got a little lit cause I was nervous. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm good. I got water. I'm good. Thank you. My assistant was like, you need water? Are you fucking up? Are you, are you going to say some shit? Um, 
What is your, not that you need to have one, what is your favorite genre of music? Um, hmm. Yeah, it's honestly hard to say. But um, off top right now, off top, and, right and, you now. know, in your flannel in your yellow flannel, in my, in my yellow flannel and my yellow Wait, flannel oh, oh, of all oh, things. Before you answer that question, huh. is that the same yellow flannel? And like, since you've debuted it? Yeah, or is this, it, this, this has never been another one. I don't have like a whole, I don't have like six of these fucking things. But what happens if you lose that? Because my, my, my squares are much larger than well, yours. Well, well, he, well, here's the thing about the flannels. Like, they had become so ingrained into the aesthetic of the videos. And honestly, like, my own personal fashion taste has changed, like, over the course of, like, starting to do the channel. That, like, they don't even leave the room where I shoot the videos. Like, w oh. never will you ever see me wearing this out of the house like not only because like shit would be majorly <laughs> fucked up if i ever were to lose it but on top of it like i i don't find myself wearing like this pattern of of flannel a lot these days like the, you know these days if it's a flannel it's maybe a bit more of like a lumberjack flannel dbm mcvoy or you know db mcvoy they want to know uh, if you're ever going to sort of get your older mixtapes onto streaming services or anything like that welcome to forever all that stuff <sighs> Don't fuck they, with they, my they, plans. They want, they want to see Don't you get the no, my plans. They That's want to see you get the Don't no ceilings treatment. The no ceilings treatment. Don't fuck with my plans. Okay. That's all I got to say in all a right. good way. So if, okay. if you can understand that, don't fuck with my plans. That's it. Um, another person asked earlier, but I'm, I'm forgetting the name. They want to know if you think that no pressure is no pressure your best project. And if not, you know, do you have an opinion as to what your best project is? It's really hard, uh, not to sound like weird or anything. I've always considered myself a, a catalog artist. I want to be re remembered for my entire uh, discography. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's ups and downs, it's highs, it's lows, and and, and especially it's highs moments. Whether those are in uh, projects that weren't necessarily received as well uh, as well as others. So. I don't know. Let me really think for a moment here. I mean, it's it's one thing I'll say as an artist is your new shit's always your favorite shit. And like I said uh, on this album, your new shit isn't as good as your old shit till your new shit is your old shit. <laughs> and people That's have true. been able to live with it forever. Um, but yeah, bro, I fucking love this album. Uh, I've never, I can, I can sit here and say I've never put this much into an album emotionally as far as writing as far as like literally doing my fucking research on punchlines like i spent time wondering have i said this line before and i'm going on rap genius and have i said this i okay is there an it, it, iteration of this is it too close is it this like i fucking went off on this album dude uh from the writing to the production to knowing that like i understood um, you know, my program Ableton more than I ever have in the past 10 years to be able to produce a beat, to be mentored by a no ID, to be on the phone with the fucking RZA, to, you know, even JJ Abrams talking to me about synth lines and shit. So I'm like, if I got to sit here and say, is this my best album? I'm saying it's my best album. And this is my best De Niro face at the same time. So it's like, um, yeah, I think it is. And I think it's my best album because it is a culmination of all my albums all my influences in a way that is more me than ever uh, in, in a way i'm not trying to replicate a kendrick a drake a cole i've learned from them learned from my mistakes i like to think and i said yo this is fucking me more than ever fuck off enjoy it here you go so I would say yes. To date, this is my most favorite album. It really, it, it it is personally. But we agree on that. Thank you. I like that. I mean, we're also talking in a fucking mirror. Um, yep. uh, the incredible true story is probably my second. I really enjoyed that, and that was super fun to just kind of create this nerd space adventure and give my thoughts on humanity and all that shit. <laughs> um. Okay, Andy wants to know. I think this is an interesting question. Now that you're retired, what are some of the artists and producers who have long been in your orbit, like six? Like, what 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 are their aspirations and plans as of right now? Now that you're just kind of like, you know, in in the dad zone, in the in, in the retirement twilight zone. It's funny. Six is coming out here in a fucking week. 
<laughs> to work on music. Uh, but, um, and who knows, you know, years or the, I, I, that's another thing. Cause you know, people try to be like, well, he's making music and he's going to, blah, 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 and they do these things and they're on your subreddit and they're creating theories. And uh, it's just like, bro, I'm literally, I'm chilling, but I'm still creating music. Uh, you know, uh, six has, has, has worked with some great artists and he will continue to do that. I know he loves to work with artists kind of from the bottom up. I think that's systemic uh, from working with me and that's in him and he likes to see someone grow and build. Um, but I know he'll work with also some really great big artists as well and has, um, he just likes to make music. He's made more money, you know, than he probably ever thought he would. And because of that, I know he's very comfortable, um, which makes me happy too, because I think a big part of like retirement was like, is my manager okay? Is my day to day okay? Is my security guard okay? Is my is my my rookie? Is my uh, is my assistant okay? Is my producer or my producers okay? Or, like I think about a lot of that, even though I should be like fuck everyone. Is my son and wife okay? Like you know what I mean? But I still think about all these other people uh, because I care and I love them and they're my family. Um, and that was a big that. that probably the biggest one, you know, thinking about six, like, is he going to be all right? And it's like, is he going to be all right? He's a fucking amazing producer. He's fantastic. He's, he's gonna, you know, go on to do amazing things on his own and, and with other artists. And I, I, I hope he does. And I know he will. And with that, I had the confidence to be able to go, I'm going to relax. So, yeah. Um, Dre Olamis wants to know, but I I, th I think there's kind of a bigger question here. Uh, this person wants to know if if you would um, mentor them in the same way that No ID was a mentor to you. But as as you become an old ass man, uh, do do you feel like you might find yourself in a place where you you might want to become uh, the the Jedi and and uh, you know mentor a young Padawan learner and uh, you know just te teach him the ways of the raps and the beats and, and all that stuff like is, is is that of interest to you i've been doing that honestly yeah. every time i learned uh learn something i always pass it on that's a real thing whether it's friends my family uh whoever like i got a lot of people that 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 work for me and that still learn from me and i i learn from them and i'm still learning every day but i i pass my knowledge on to a lot of people and i've said this before you know i i help a lot of people and i don't talk about it i mean i'm tacoing about it right now but i mean in depth of things that i've done for people or um taking care of people financially and mentally and being there uh, so with that being said uh, it, it is something that I've, I've been doing um it's more so personal people that i've met in my life it's not like oh yeah like some guy on twitter respectfully love you dude appreciate that um or in the chat um but uh yeah, it's more so people I come across and I'm like, yo, you're dope. Like I remember one of my my old – basically every assistant that has ever worked for me has gone up the ladder. Almost every assistant except for a few that got fired because they were just fucking incompetent. But uh, And I gave them a chance. But everyone has gone up to be like my day-to-day -day, you know, manager, tour manager-esque world, this, that. Um, because I care. You know, I, I really I really do care. So um, – I've been blessed enough to kind of already experience that Padawan to master. And I myself, uh, who, yeah, I'm a master of my craft. But I think the reason that is, is because I still know I'm a student and I still learn every day. So, yeah. That's wonderful and inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> um, CAF TNH wants to know, um, you know, you've spoken about this a little bit on your own records and talking about, uh, metaphysical stuff, almost like afterlife stuff in your own work. But, uh, th this person wants to know, like in your mind personally, what are your own views of religion, the spiritual, you know, are, are you a Reddit atheist? Are you a, <laughs> um, are you a Reddit atheist? Are you a Westboro Baptist church member? Are you, are you somewhere in between? Like where, 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 where do you, where do you land in between those two? Those, those are the, those are the polar opposites. <laughs> did this person say that exactly? No, I, 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 I added the last part, the you Reddit. Hit it like jazz. You just yeah. kind of just, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I, um, I riffed on it. Love it. So my mother growing up, um, she was a uh, super Christian. Very, very Christian. Uh, you know, if you don't believe in what, Jesus, what, what, kind, what kind though? Same homosexuals are going to hell. 
She mm. was like uh, sane. I, I, you know, she was bowler, uh, a borderline schizophrenic and bipolar. So that may have uh, played into it. Also assault, uh, both sexual and physical that she endured growing up. You know, a lot of things at the end of the day. She did a lot of fucked up shit. She her, herself was a racist woman systemically uh, who fell in love and was attracted to black men, which to most people doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make sense to me, but I never try to make sense of it. And uh, that was a very hard thing growing up, you know, having your own mother call you a n- and the rest of your uh, siblings who are all black or should I say look more biracial than you do. And uh, that was a very hard thing to, to, to fucking deal with, man. Um and she would always spew this, like, you know, these Psalms and all this shit on me and Proverbs and, and the Bible and, and white Jesus and a beard and all this other shit. And let me first and foremost say that by no <clears throat> means am I belittling anyone's faith or religion by saying that. That was my own personal uh, relationship with that growing up, and it was very negative and it wasn't good. So much so to the point where, you know, she had a friend that she was friends with for 20 years, and they'd always fight and this and that, and she'd call her a bitch, and, you know, she called my mom a whore and a slut, and then and they go back and forth. But her friend was Catholic, and my mom was Christian. Forever, my mom was always Christian. She raised me Christian. Uh, we'd go to different church, black churches, white churches, you know, I'm talking about like praise him, churches in law, uh, you know, praise the Lord churches, uh, churches where uh, I got baptized and they wouldn't actually baptize me until I spoke in tongues. So there, everybody's sitting there going, and I'm like, uh, I'm not doing this. And they're like, well, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. And I go, okay, uh, shit about a Honda, shit about a Honda. And then I'm suddenly okay enough to baptize by bullshitting it. And after all these years, uh, my mom suddenly des- decides to become Catholic because her friend somehow convinced her to become that. So now I'm talking to some guy in a confession booth, but I can't pray to God directly. And what the fuck is God? And my mom gets in a fight with her, and now we're not Catholic next week. Now we're Christian again. And and Christianity is a certain way, and everyone knows Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the only way to enter the kingdom of heaven, and that's the only way that there is. And I say, but mom, what about, you know, indigenous peoples on islands and this and that? And she goes, people just know Jesus. And I go, white Jesus? Really? They just know white people just know. And I'm like eight years old. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's the way it is. <laughs> Not. And as I get older, I don't know how I don't become a fucking Satanist out of spite, but I realize I don't believe in this shit. <laughs> and I don't knock anybody who believes in it either, okay? I mean, we got God, we got Jesus, we got Flying Spaghetti Monster. And, uh, you know, and these are the things that I'm thinking in my head. And I go, I do believe in God. Uh, I believe in God, personally. I believe in something. Uh, you know, and, and I, I really, it, it's why I, I kind of took, uh, gravitated towards Andy Weir's The Egg. And I use that as inspiration for everybody, the album, my third album, uh, with Neil deGrasse Tyson, an atheist who I got to play God. I wish I could do the thing where you can, anyway. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought that was really special where basically it's almost like every human being who's ever lived has to live every single life over and over and over. And then they can become this quote unquote God, which is not essentially God, but it's a, a higher sentient being in some other fucking parallel universe, which if I could like totally uh, create that in like 19, you know, 20 as a religion, I would have done. But I say all this shit to say, I believe in a higher power. I don't know what that is. It's definitely not a fucking white dude with a beard sitting on a cloud. Um, But I believe that there is something bigger. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, who does not believe this, when I asked him, I said, well, what do you believe happens when we die? He said, the same thing that happened before we were born, nothingness. And in that nothingness, we didn't give a shit. We weren't bothered by it. It didn't hurt us or there was no fear, no anxiety, no this or that. And then we were born and after which we will die and go back into this abyss of nothing. And I'm kind of like, yo, like, could I get a heaven? (laughs) But at the end of the day, I have no fucking idea, but I believe in something higher than me. And I respect any and every person who has their own religious beliefs. uh, And I will not belittle them. I may make fun of you jokingly. (laughs) <laughs> but I would never seriously uh, try to belittle someone's faith. So with that, there it is. Okay. 
Uh, last question. We'll do we'll do last question over here. Last question. All over right. Here. Second to last. Did you say second to last? I think you did. Uh, and the last one was the second to last. This one's the last. This is the last mm -hmm. one. This is the last one. Because you, right. you you have some COD to play. Um, <laughs> Uh, Walker C four twelve wants to know. I think I think this is an interesting question. So, and it's it's also simultaneously a test. Um, so, out, you know, I'm 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 I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stretch this person's question a little bit because it's kind of vague. Like, in, in, what, this person wants to know what's an opinion that Melon has that you disagree with and upset you. Now, I think it would be interesting if you extended that to albums that you have not made. Is, 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 is there an opinion of an album or an artist, you know, contemporary project that you really love that you and I really disagree on that, 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 uh, I, that yeah, I, yeah, probably, probably chance the rappers album. Honestly, if I'm oh, being you, completely you, honest, you're, 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 um, love, you're loving the big day. Am I loving the big day? I've never super listened to chance. So when I listen mm -hmm. to that album, I hear every other fucking chance album personally. Now I don't okay. know if that sets the internet on fire, but I hear a dude who's rapping on really fucking weird beats who has a weird fucking voice who's saying some cool shit and there it is you know what i mean like i listened to the album i didn't i'm just being real like i didn't fucking like did i like acid rap more sure was i 23 you know what i mean was i in the same class as this guy yeah for sure so yeah um but i think i don't know i think chance just got so much hate for that album and i didn't necessarily uh agree with it and I think he's a fantastic artist, and I think he just kind of like became a meme. I have to piss so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me let 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 let, let this pee break be the final pee break. Is this the it final pre pee break, and then we well, come well, back? The, well, the, well, this this will be the sayonara pee break. Oh, you know, it's like we'll we'll, we'll say we'll say bye, and then this will be the the final pee break before. Can you hurry the fuck up? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for being a wonderful conversationalist a wonderful guest uh staying longer than you had to and just being an all-around chill dude just like i knew that you would um and uh you know again uh everything that i ever assumed about you personally uh nice guy chill dude thoughtful guy uh sensitive guy you know i i think i think has all been confirmed in this conversation and uh hopefully you know th this this has been a, a positive experience on the other end too very, uh, very positive. Uh, <clears throat> very nice. Uh, very positive. I, I, I appreciate this. Um, and yeah, man, I fuck with you. You know, I'm going to text you after this and thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll look and, for the text. Uh, I also appreciate, you know, you just kind of opening your world of fans to me and actually giving them uh, an opportunity to know me more personally. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, man. At the end of the day, I've always just been a dude who's just trying to have fun and make music and, and, and kind of figure out what the fuck he's doing in life. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to uh, discuss that and get uh, kind of drunk uh, in, <laughs> in this interview, uh, but still coherent, I believe. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for what you do for the community. Thank you for what you do for music. Uh, and also thank you for... Um, also being a genuine, nice uh, person. I appreciate you. Uh, I thank you for the time. And uh, hopefully we can do some fun collaborative videos together. Tran, Zishin, did you give this interview a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. Who should I interview next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't die. Uh, hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Uh, hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, interviewing myself for two hours. <laughs> Forever. <laughs>